Betty, uh, can you read the declaration of electronic meeting? Sure. On March 31st, 2020, the Middlesex Board of Supervisors ratified a declaration of emergency issued by the county's director of emergency management and adopted an ordinance to ensure continuity of county government. A copy of this ordinance can be found on the county's website under Board of Supervisors Ordinances number 81. These procedures include the ability for the Board of Supervisors and other county public entities to conduct electronic meetings. Information on how to access these meetings by video and telephone is posted on the county website. This ordinance was extended on May 5th, 2020 and again on November 4th, 2020. The provisions of the ordinance and electronic meetings is in effect for a period of six months unless amended, rescinded, or readopted by the Board of Supervisors. An audio recording is being made of the meeting, which will be linked from the county's website. Notice of the meetings along with access information has been posted on the county's website and at the front of the historic courthouse. An electronic meeting link was also sent to those persons that have asked to be part of the board's agenda list. As each person joins the meeting, the public audio will be muted to avoid background noise and the board and staff audio will be open. If a meeting calls for public comment, the chairman will announce that the meeting is open for comments and public lines will be unmuted. Those with an audio connection should use star nine, which will notify the moderator that you wish to comment. To unmute your own phone, you should use star six. Those with video capability are to use the raise hand feature to be recognized by the chair. Each person will be given three minutes to speak and each speaker must identify themselves when speaking. All votes will be by roll call and recorded in the minutes. Board members who leave the meeting or arrive must verbally note their attendance. If all board members are not joined by video, a roll call will be made every two hours to confirm a quorum. All right. Uh, do the, any board member have any questions about the process? If not, purpose of this meeting is our, our regular agenda uh, business meeting for April the 6th, uh, 2021. At this time, uh, roll call, Betty. Mr. Coons? Here. Mr. Mansfield? Turn your mic on, uh, Pete. You got, you're on mute, can't hear you. You still you still on mute? Well, that's not good. How oh yeah, I hear you. <laughs> we hear you now, okay. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Kimbrough. Here. And Mr. Jesse. Here. Well, all right. I'd like to call the call the meeting to order at this time. Uh, Reginald Williams, could you lead us in prayer? And Matt, pleasure to the flag. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we come once again. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for your blessings you place upon this county. Father, there's a task need to be done. Be with us now and strengthen us as we go through this process. In Jesus' name, we all do pray. Amen. 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 Would all citizens of our nation rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. At this time, we'd, we'd like to uh, get a motion of approval of the consent agenda, which consists of minutes of agenda on page one to four, and then the minutes of March the second, budget work session, and then in a regular meeting, and then March the 16th, another budget work session. Disbursements, and payroll. Do anybody have any discussions or correction yes. on the consent Mr. agenda? Mr. Chair, I'd like to see if we could remove or postpone the oyster shell discussion towards the end of the uh, agenda today. I don't think we're ready to discuss it in full as we're still gathering information, if that's okay with the board. All right. Okay, so uh, do, we, do we have a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda with with taking out the oyster shell restoration part of it. So, so moved. Second. Right, we have a motion by Reggie, second 
by John. Any more discussion? Roll call. Mr. Coons? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kimbrough? Aye. And Mr. Jesse? Aye. Motion so carried. Next, uh, I would like to open the public comment. During this meeting, the chairman will invite the public to make public, public comments. Each speaker will be given the opportunity to speak during the regular meeting, public comment period. And once during the public hearing, uh, public comment period, all comments will be addressed to the Board of Supervisors. If you have a microphone on your, or on your computer, you can present comments to the computer. There is a raise hand feature on the Zoom meeting screen that allows you to raise your hand to make public comment. The moderator or chairman can see your hand raised and the microphone will be unmuted so that you can make comments. If you do not have a microphone and wish to make comments, you wish to have to call into the meeting using the information above. If you call in by phone to comment, you can press star nine, which is the same as the raise hand feature on the Zoom screen. To let the moderator or chairman know that you wish to speak. When the chairman calls on you, press star six to unmute your phone so you can make your comments. You must identify yourself and time limits are still in place as three minutes per person. Kevin, do we have anyone that would like to have a public comment to the board? Uh, I'm scanning the attendees now and I do not see anyone with the with their hand raised at this time, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, Betty, we don't have any letters, do we? Not for this portion. All right, I would like to close the uh, public comment period at this time. Next, we have the constitutional officers, uh, treasurer, Kathy Triff, which is a report only. And then we have uh, commissioner of revenue, May Burt. Is May available? Good afternoon. Yes. So then anyone have uh, any questions for the commissioner of revenue at this time? <laughs> Rich, you got Mr. Chair, I, I got an email as I think we all did from the treasurer. Okay, and all right. Well, well, thank you. Next, we're going to go on to our agency and staff report. Uh, we have VDOT report only on page 63 to 65. Actually, Mr. Chairman, we have with us today Joyce McGowan with VDOT. Oh, okay. So she is here, Joyce. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, Joyce, we can hear you. Thank you. Um, I was asked to attend the three o'clock session to answer any questions you may have about any maintenance needs throughout the, the county. Um, right now, I guess we're coming out of winter. So we have been diligently fixing potholes and now running into getting asphalt where we can actually make some better repairs to some of the, the winter breakup. Um, over the past several weeks, um, that's what we've been using. Um, we also have completed some repairs down in Deltaville that were brought to our attention by um, citizens and members of the board um, regarding some sinkholes around some of the drop inlets in the sidewalk. They were repaired last week. Um, we have, we still have the Fairfield um, shoreline to repair. Um, we ran into um, a, a tiny snag. We have to put in um, a um, turbidity curtain to make sure that we do the work properly under our permit. So we should be working on that toward the end of this month. And then we'll move over to the pipe replacement over in Rimlick on 676. We're waiting for utilities to be moved on that. So. Um, some bigger projects coming down the line. Um, the Dragon Run Bridge continues to move along. They've opened up, as, um, I guess if you've been through there, the left lane, they're working on building the right lane. Um, as soon as that's done um, toward the fall, they'll reopen that to traffic. Um, we're still on schedule to start the work on Route 625 at Barracks Mill Pond to replace the bridge with the detour in place. And um, there is some sidewalk repairs that we're going to make to um, Urbana and Deltaville in the summer months. And um, gosh, I'm looking through my list here. I think that's about all the bigger projects that um, we have going on. Um, so if, if you have any questions for me, feel free to 
to ask. Oh, and I guess we're going to start cutting the grass. Um, April, mid, it's almost mid-April, but um, we're going to start on the secondary roads um, April to May, and then we'll move on to the primary roads in June. Um, we're going to put in some um, treatments on the primary. We're going to be treating all the areas that we've identified on the primary and secondaries for Johnson grass throughout the year. Um, and mow those areas um, more frequently this year to try and keep ahead of that. So um, sorry for interrupting, but yeah, I think that's all that I have. All right, well, thank you. Any Joyce? Other member has a question for Joyce at this yeah. time? Yes. Okay. Uh, hey, Joyce, I just wanted to thank you for coming aboard. I was the one that asked that you be here. But that's okay. at, the same, at the same time I was asking, uh, your man Ron gave me a call and I think gave me a really good update on uh, what we were going to do on Remlick Road. Okay. My, uh, just for your information, my concern is that you've got a uh, three inch rock, uh, I think they call it stone, uh, blocking the discharge from the culvert uh, between that pond and the creek. And I think the next big rain we have, it's going to be enough of an impediment that it's definitely going to flood across. So the sooner you can get, get those, uh, a new culvert in, it would really be a help. And I would love to see the size go up. It's my understanding that it's right now steel and you're going to have to replace it. So when you replace it, if you can go to, to, a, to a larger diameter uh, culvert, it would suck. Everybody would say thank you, including yeah, me. We are, yeah, we're increasing the capacity by using an elliptical pipe. So we'll have more coverage oh, very the good. on the traffic and... Um, increase the capacity a bit. And the stone there is sitting on top of the pipe. The pipe itself has some impediments. That's why we need to replace it. So yes, the sooner we get that pipe repaired and fixed and out of there, the better. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, that, that, that stone that you've got in is terrible as far as clogging. You know, it yeah, catches a, anything yeah. that, that, that yeah. comes yeah. out of there. <laughs> and holds it in what culvert we've got now. Right, we, we check it at least weekly. So we're, we're on top oh, okay. of it, we'll, we'll keep an eye on. Thank you very much, Joyce, appreciate it. You're welcome. Anybody else? Yeah, George, this <laughs> is Reggie Williams, um, on Harlem Village District. Um, I've got some concerns for its safety on cleaning the ditches out on Hairless Road, Route 619. Um, even when we get a rain, stuff is running across the road and it's right on curves. And I think that it's easy to get to right now if you're just cleaning the ditches out. And also mm -hmm. on 620, where you come down the hill at from the elementary school, the ditches are being washed out. And the last I looked, which was this morning, the side of the road is almost getting close to the, um, the asphalt. So mm -hmm. with the uh, ditches maybe rearranged or Something like that, I go need attention now before it comes greater later on. And it's right okay. at the uh, verge. If you walk around, they can see that where the water and erosion is started right now on the hill. As you go down the hill from the uh, from the elementary school, school. especially okay. on the right hand side, it would be nice to have a nice sidewalk from the school all the way back to Hales Road. That would be nice. But uh, the, the ditches need to be attention to before they can be uh, start the road and the highway. Okay. All right. Any, anybody else got any more questions for Joyce? It... Hey, Joyce, this is uh, Matt. We've uh, noticed, uh, and of course, it's probably due to the incredible amount of rainfall we've had over the spring and winter, but uh, there's a lot of ditches and, and coverance in Deltaville that aren't draining, and, and it's really be become apparent since the contractors started work on the water system down there. Um, of course, we've got him under a pretty tight contract to put it back to like condition, but in some cases, uh, these coverts are just stopped up and, and haven't had a lot of attention given to them. 
Is, is that something that VDOT can look into a little bit? Uh, I've seen water standing in, in areas that I have never seen water stand, even after a hurricane. And I know it's primarily because of the amount of rainfall we have, but if it's something that maybe VDOT can do a quick look around and see uh, there's a couple of suspect coverings that are clogged up, that would be very helpful. Okay. You have um, in Deltaville, I'm assuming with the water lines, we're talking about off the, the main line of 33 on those secondary streets, kind of from um, the grocery store north, maybe. Is that where you're seeing it? Well, it's, it's not just uh, mm -hmm. along the water line. It, we're down there more because the water line's under construction. I could try to get down there at least once or twice, um, uh, well, here lately a day, but uh, at least <laughs> once or twice a week. But um, long story short, it's just throughout the community. It, there, there seems oh, okay. to be water ponding in areas, even where there's no construction going on. And of course, we take very detailed pictures before we let the contractor get in there and start rooting around. Because, you know, we don't want the contractor being blamed for something that was a pre-existing condition. But it just appears that there's a lot of uh, drainage coverings that may be stopped up, not draining. Maybe some ditches that need to be pulled, things of that nature. Yeah, we started down that way um, and are working our way around. So I will um, find out from the, I I'll take a look and I'll make sure yeah, we have thank those you. areas on that list. We've got our pipe washing truck in. We should start pipe washing those culverts out probably sometime between May and September. We should have okay. that, that, that taken care of. Thanks, Joyce. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other board members? If, if not, well, thank you, Joyce. You have a nice day. Thank you. I'll see you at seven. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, Next, we have school matters. Dr. Peter Gretz. Dr. Gretz there. Mr. Chairman, uh, Dr. Gretz is uh, in, uh, I think he is uh, away with his family on Easter vacation. He's asked me to cover a couple of items for him when you get down to the um, appropriations on page 66, 67, et cetera. All right. So if you're ready for me to do that. Yeah, we have the appropriation on 60, yeah, 61 to 67. Okay, FY 2021, 61. Uh, this is a measure retroactively approving the down payment needed to order the HVAC equipment in time for the delivery installation this summer. Uh, the board will recall uh, Dr. Pete and uh, staff uh, spoke to the board about the need for this down payment. It perhaps should have been something we did last month, but in hindsight, it got missed and we needed to authorize that. So that's the first one. Right. You want to take them yeah, together? Just take them all on. Okay. Then we just... uh, the next is 2021-62 uh, solar panel project generates credits on the grid. Solar Renewable Energy Certificates, SREC, which I'm sure John Coons could probably tell us more about, which Sun Tribe has agreed to purchase from the schools for $6,010 each quarter for 15 years. This request would appropriate the payment for the first two quarters. And then FY21-63, Kiwanis has donated money to be used in the construction, in constructing raised garden beds which Compass Academy students will use to raise crops. They will use the crops in their cooking or in cooking their own meals and will donate a portion of the, uh, I guess the produce to the Cryer Center where they regularly volunteer at the food pantry. And then last, uh, page 69, 2021-8, uh, we will be moving to four days of in-person learning on Monday, April the 12th, according, accordingly, we want to transfer CARES money from various purchased service lines, additional speech therapy, psychology services, psycho, psycho, hmm, psycho, <laughs> psychology services, pronounce that 10 times, et cetera, uh, to division-wide materials and supplies to better support and move to doable in-person learning days. And uh, that's um, my talking points that Dr. Pete's given me. If you have any questions, I hope you don't. Uh, I can uh, refer those to Dr. Pete. All right. Well, so at this time, do we have a motion to approve FY 2021 61, 62, 63, and budget transfer request form FY 2021 08? Do we have a motion to approve? I so approve. All right. We Second. have a motion by, by Pete Mansfield. 
and probably second by John Kuntz. Any more discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Kuntz? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kimbrough? Aye. Mr. Jesse? Aye. So moved. All right. Next would be social service report only is on page 70 and 72. Now we have our line item D, Parks and Recreation Department. Karen Reed. I see her up here on the screen somewhere. If you can, oh, there you go. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, the Tom Carter Moore Gymnasium will be used for a variety of programs, such as activity for kids, activity for seniors, exercise classes, self-defense for girls and women, line dancing, dance classes, cheer, karate, different, different camps, volleyball camp, basketball camp, basketball practices, games, basketball tournaments, and open gym for, on certain days and times for different age groups, badminton, pickleball, and be able to walk around the gymnasium and shuffleboard. And I've had, uh, one organization to ask me if they could use the gymnasium for basketball, but I had to turn them down due to the condition of the floor. The floor is in is not in good condition. Um, Kevin, do you have the pictures? There's some pictures of the gymnasium floor since the removal of the um, equipment. And you gotta be very careful when you walk there in the gymnasium. And it's not, you can see any sports on the on that floor. And, uh, the list that I gave you of some of the variety of the program, which I intend to offer, some of what I did offer in the very beginning, and I'd like to bring them back. And gymnasium will be used for, for those programs and more. Um, if anybody have any, any other um, questions or that they'd like to ask. All right, does anybody have any questions for, for current at this time? Yeah, I, I kind of feel badly that I was not aware of all those programs. Are they available or advertised in the county website? Or how do you go to market with all of those programs? The South South Center, the county website, flyers, word of mouth. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Does any, any of my other board members have any questions for current? If not, if not, then uh, we'd like to thank you, Karen, and then uh, we're going to go to the uh, the gym floor by Bay Design with Ben Burton next. You know, Mr. Chairman, with us tonight we have Ben Burton and Wayne Savage with uh, Bay Design. Uh, ben uh, circulated a brochure on some tile choices to actually repair the gym floor. Uh, ben, if you can, uh, I'd like for you to try to share your screen if you happen to have that brochure so the board can see uh, what we're discussing. Or we could potentially share. There we go. The, the, uh, the board package includes the short memorandum and the uh, and the brochure about the uh, the tile floor, so all those items are in there. I think it's pages uh, 73. 73 through seventy six. It looks like I think seventy. Yes. Yeah, seventy seven is the page with the gym layout. Kevin, can you pull that up and share the screen, please? You want me to get it, Kevin? If you have it, yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. Yep. 
now. Okay. Gentlemen, what you're looking at is a, a promotional brochure from the uh, for the VCT tile that it's the type of tile that the contractor has indicated is an appropriate type of tile for the gym floor replacement. It comes in 12 inch square, just like the tile that you saw already pulling up from the um, pulling up from the floor. But the it's uh, the the pictures that Karen shared earlier. It's obvious why the tile floor replacement uh, needs to happen with the uh, the center re uh, renovation project. <clears throat> the contractor took a look at it, gave us a preliminary price. Uh, they are thinking along the lines of $27,000. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns at the, at the point in time when uh, they looked at it about a month ago. <clears throat> and so I'm suggesting that uh, when everything gets uh, worked out, it'll probably uh, we've added a 20% contingency to that, so we think the that part of the renovation project should be in the mid 30s. Uh, the tile floor would be taken up; uh, it would be replaced with a 12 by 12 uh, VCT tile. They're planning on uh, having a basketball uh, kit installed with it, which is all the lines that you see there on that highlighted portion of the. Um, of the brochure. Uh, one of the things that Karen and I and Matt have been talking about is one of the elements that uh, the contractor is prepared to do is to uh, remove the uh, the bleachers from the walls so that they can replace the uh, tiles under the bleachers. But Karen has pointed out there may be a need just to completely get rid of those bleachers because they uh, may not meet um, current uh, ADA standards and that type of thing. And that's one of the things that we'll be looking at as we get further into the contract. The uh, Bill, Just real quick, is, Dan, if, if I may, uh, this is Matt. I want to do everything we can to try to keep those bleachers because they're just well-made bleachers. They simply just don't make them like that anymore. If there's a way we can retrofit some kind of ADA compliance measure on them, I would, I would certainly hope we would try to do that before we get rid. And we'll, we'll look at some ways to put the, uh, <clears throat> to put railings on them or something of that nature. But right. again, these are, these are all items that are, uh, that are popping up because of the the need to replace the floor. It's leading trickling into, to different things. The contractor is prepared to address these type of items, uh, but it's not in the base bid that was that uh, they included. So as the board uh, considers the financing package uh, later in the agenda today, uh, assuming that gets approved, then I'm assuming Matt will have the authorization to finalize the contract with uh, Trinity USA, and they'll get started on the, the project. Uh, since the board awarded it last week, Matt gave us uh, advance authorization to work with Trinity in reviewing uh, in a pre-construction, pre-contract situation, we're reviewing all the uh, shop drawings. So they're getting, uh, they're basically getting set up to uh, move right away when the uh, contract is signed to begin uh, actual demolition and um, some renovation. Uh, basically, that's all I had. If there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Just one quick comment, Ben. Uh, we met uh, down there the other day and looked at the floor. Uh, we, we discussed the possibility of not just doing a basketball uh, kit, but also maybe volleyball and or pickleball, maybe even the shuffleboard, try to mix them all in to that facility. Is that something that this company can do? Can they take um, the different measurements for like a volleyball court and a pickleball court and then maybe the shuffleball court off to the side. And try to well, with, that all with right. all those, with all those lines, we can just paint the tile black and and go from there. Yeah. Um, now, basically, what the kits are, they're not an overlay onto the tile. They're individual tiles that replace the basic tile. Right. So you don't 
their their permanent type of thing. So I believe that the lines that come in the basketball kit also include things like a volleyball line, but we'll get more information on that as we work with them. Yeah, outstanding. I mean, the, the sample picture looks like it in, it includes more than just basketball. It's it's got enough lines to confuse everybody. Yeah. Right. Okay. Does any other board members have any questions? Yeah, uh, it sounds like we're replacing with very similar product. What is the life expectancy of, of this kind of a tile? Uh, they're anywhere from 20 to 30 years. Uh, the reason the old tiles were warped up, as you see, is because they'd been covered so long for with the mats, which trapped the condensation down beneath the mats and uh, caused the, the glue just to delaminate and that type of thing. And what do we know about the product itself in terms of sustainability or, or best practices being used in the products manufacturing? Or? It, yes, this is a, this is a standard tile that's, that you'll see uh, coming out in about any type of uh, school program or that type of thing. It's a, it's, it's a very standard vinyl composition tile. So standard, but not, I mean, there's no like lead certification or anything like that. I, I haven't looked into that type of thing. There's no, given the, the situation with the rest of the uh, school, uh, since the, the building itself isn't LEED certified, uh, there's no real advantage of having a LEED certification on on a tile. We can look into it, but... I guess what I'm saying is we're not looking to replace the whole building, but that doesn't mean we have to use 40-year-old technology. If, if there's state-of-the-art that goes into the new buildings, we could still be considering that as opposed to saying, well, we're not doing the whole building, so we'll use this cheap stuff. <coughs> Uh, this is not an old technology. <laughs> okay, so standard more than anything approaching lead is what I'm understanding. Yes. Ben, when you pulled up the tile, uh, what is underneath? Just a concrete floor. Is there any the, way the, to just paint the, uh, grind the concrete and just paint over it? Uh, generally that's not a, that's not an approach that's used in, in, uh, gym floors because of there's, there's usually some variation in the, in the concrete surface itself. Uh, and you got to remember they're, they're taking up a tile and they're taking up old glue that was on the concrete floor. Uh, nothing to say that they'll get up every piece of the old glue, but they'll certainly get up 99% of it so that the new tile with a little cushioning effect for the uh, recreational use can be, um, can be attached to it. But it's not recommended that a, a base, a, a concrete floor be used as just a gym floor. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, because you definitely don't want to fall down and play basketball on a cement floor. I mean, if you're outside, that's a different story, but it's going to be a lot of different things going on in there from aerobics to everything else, and you surely don't want to a cement floor in there with that on there. So uh, any other board members have any questions for Ben Burton? All right. Well, do we, we need a motion? Uh, I, I would like y'all to authorize us to proceed if y'all are satisfied with the product. Right. And we can get uh, Trinity going on the uh, replacement. All right. So uh, do we have a motion uh, for Trinity to uh, replace the, uh, the floor, the gym floor, with the materials that, that were approved, I mean, that were given to us today? Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion by Reggie. Do we have a second? A second, so we can discuss. Right. We have a motion by Reggie, probably a second by Lud. 
any more any more discussion yeah I, just for clarity is the floor replacement here replacing the window replacement that we've talked about uh, yeah. yes sir we've taken the uh, the basic contract that will be awarded to Trinity excludes the social services boardroom windows. This tile addition will be, uh, since it did not come in as part of the base bid, it will eventually be a change order as we work out the final details about the flooring and all the other elements that are associated with it uh, as a change order to the basic contract once the contract is is actually created. Uh, they've presented this data as a preliminary uh, indication for the board to have an idea of just the the rough order of uh, magnitude of the cost of doing the basic floor renovation. You will eventually see a approval of a uh, requesting an approval of a change order uh, to the basic contract once that is uh, created. Okay, so. Essentially, from a number standpoint, elimination of windows is a reduction of $22,000. Add the gym floor, $33,000. Yeah, roughly, yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that was my understanding is the board's desire last month. Um, Right. Yeah, that's what, that's what we have. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. One of one of the concerns I have is I'm hearing that this project has no boundary. Uh, there may be some bleacher issues. There may be, you know, I, usually I like to go into a project hoping for no change orders, not expecting change orders. Um, can anyone speak to what the boundaries are here? What's the scope? Just the floor? More than the floor? The floor, but not the windows? What's the scope? Well, each one of these elements that have come up, for example, the uh, if if you decide to have some modifications made to the bleachers, uh, that would be a change order. If you decide that, um, well, Karen, let's just take the bleachers out for now, have the tile floor there, uh, store the bleachers somewhere else, and we'll consider some new bleacher arrangement in the future. Uh, that's that would be no change order, and that would be a a future uh, contract with somebody else about the bleachers. Uh, so it's we we keep adding these things because uh, the board and because we found out more things about the gym floor once all the uh, uh, gymnastics equipment was removed. Understood. So. Matt, my, my question, I guess, is for you. Are, is it possible next month that we could have the full scope and understand the bleachers and we could make a decision on a, a full project and not do it piecemeal and expose ourselves to just cost overrun after cost overrun? I, I've, well, I've heard a lot about waste, and I don't want to waste. Well, of course it is, but as of right now, the only direction we've been given is to replace the floor. Um, we looked at the bleachers when we were out there the other day, and my hope is we can put them right back. So um, as far as replacing them, I'm kind of, I was kind of surprised by that tonight, actually. Right, right. So Me um, too. yeah, as of right now, it's just the uh, floor and the replacement of the tile on the floor that we're looking at with this with this project, and that's what the change order would reflect. What, what does it take to know about those bleachers, what we need to know to be able to make an informed decision? Well, I guess we can study it. And well, we the, the first thing we'll have to do is is extend them out now that all the uh, <clears throat> now that all the uh, gymnastics equipment has been removed, so that we can take a take a look at them fully extended. Up to now, they've been pushed up against the wall and closed up, and now we can take a look at it and see if there's any. Uh, we'll talk with the architect about. Uh, We'll take pictures of it, talk with the architect about uh, what needs to be done and to make it ADA compliant or even if it has to be ADA compliant. Yeah, I'm, just to be clear, I'm not trying to be a stick in the mud. I, I'm fine with moving ahead with the floors. It, it's, it, it seems to be the will of the board. I just, 
I think better practice going forward is for us to analyze the, the larger scope and make sure we've got all our ducks in a row and we're presenting full baked decisions at these junctures. So that, that's just, those are my comments. Well, I, I, I personally feel fine about, you know, uh, what we're doing and the way we're going, going about it because right, basically the bleaches are there. We can take them out. They're good, good, hot lumber, no knots or nothing in them, and then put some railings up and make sure they're ADAD compliance and be done with it. I mean, we're not talking about putting new bleaches in because I can tell you, those bleaches, if you go down and look at them, I don't pull them out. And they, you cannot buy timber like that today. And I'm going to tell you, it's good, hot old, good, uh, select boards. And all we have to do is retrofit some of it. We're not talking about buying no more bleachers. We're not uh, just give them ADA, put some, put some railings on it. We'd be done with it. We're not talking about going down and buying new benches, putting them off to the side and doing all this. I'm going to leave this up to uh, Ben Burton, let him look at everything. And then I, I would like to, uh, when y'all go look at them, call me down. And I'm going to take a good look at everything. But as, as, as looking at everything in there, I'm not looking at buying no new beach benches in there. We want to have everything completed, have the floors all the way back to that wall, because we're not going to keep them there and put new tile down and then have the old tile behind the, the bleaches. That's not applicable. So basically, that's the, that's the scope. And, and I think that'll be a good idea with this scope. Any, any other board members got any questions? All right. Well, we had a motion, been properly second. At this time, roll call. Mr. Coons? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kimbrough? Aye. Mr. Jesse? Ah, Motion's well, okay. All right, next we have the historical trail. Wayne Savage. Once again, Bay Design. Uh, we met with Wayne Savage, Michelle Brown, I think Wayne and I walked the uh, proposed historic trail, and I believe Wayne has a depiction of that in the packet that he can walk us through a little bit. There's Wayne. Uh, Wayne. Hey, everybody. How are you today? Can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah we, we can, hear we you, Wayne. Hear you fine. Yeah, we hear you fine. Okay. Making sure. All right, yeah. Um, Betty, can you share that back since you had, I think you had your, your screen shared. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. I've been traveling and I just got home about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, hold on just a sec. Thanks. There we go. All right, so uh, kind of up at the, you know, the old, let me, uh, hold on a second. Can, Does it uh, start here on the parking so, garage? So. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. I'm going to annotate. So, uh, you know, right here, here's the old bus garage right here. Um, and, you know, we're going to have our parking is going to start, you know, right here. Um, right now we're showing there's 27 parking spaces that are shown right there. Um, with a couple handicap spots. Um, and then before the trail starts, we've got um, over here this little hatched area right here. Uh, it's a little area for some benches, pavilions. I uh, haven't really quite finalized with Michelle and Matt exactly what that's going to be, but just a nice flat area. It's, it's already relatively flat up there. Uh, we can have a nice sitting area, some benches, maybe some picnic tables. Um, you know, it's just a place for people to relax. Um, it, it'll be accessible for handicap. Um, et cetera. Um, and then we get started on the trail. Um, basically what we're showing right now, the, the total trail length, um, as it's currently shown is about 4,080 feet. Uh, so roughly three quarters of a mile, uh, is what we've got right now. Um, that would include the access that goes up to the workforce housing area, uh, as well as a couple optional crossings that we've got shown, um, you know, through the wetlands. Um, so, um, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, if everyone, anyone wants to walk it, uh, it's, it's, uh, the main portion of the trail and I'll, I'll call the main portion, um, this section in here. Um, sorry, I'm not, here's a, it's a rough idea, but basically that's the main portion, if you will, 
uh, of the trail. Uh, that's flagged in the field right now, or approximately, uh, with some pink flagging. Um, we're pretty easy to follow. So if anyone wants to kind of take a look at what that, what that is right now, that's kind of what's drawn here. Um, we don't have the section, uh, flagged up to the Raleigh park area. Um, but we can, if, if anyone wants to see that. Um, but generally, uh, like I said, it's 4,080 feet. Um, we've got that main parking lot, uh, on the one side, uh, Matt asked us to air. There's an existing gravel area right here, uh, right behind the gym. Uh, so Matt asked us to show a, a separate parking lot over there. Um, it will abut right next to the access to Raleigh Park, uh, the workforce housing. Um, so that's an optional parking area uh, that's in there. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for now. I mean, uh, we've gone through and walked it and uh, got that done. Um, we'll be getting the wetland delineation portion of it done. Uh, I, I believe if we haven't already been out there. We'll be out there this week um, getting that portion done. So we can get that to the core. Uh, we'll need that for the crossings. Um, the core will have to approve those with permits. Um, other than that, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. I know also included in the packet, uh, we've got our proposal uh, for the final design uh, work is all in there. Um, I believe that'll be up for your guys' uh, discussion and approval today uh, so that we can keep moving. Um, and get the final design and construction plans uh, ready to go. So I think that's that's all I got, unless you guys have specific questions uh, about the trail. Well, like I said, we walked the trail. I, I mean, it's gonna be a very nice trail. Uh, I also saw where you, where, I guess in the 40s or 50s, where the old agriculture building did a curbing for where an old well pump, and then it goes down to a mm -hmm. spring. And I, I think that's that's gonna be a very good talking point, you know, when, you, when you're going through the trail. Because it was very interesting. I didn't think back in the woods we'll find anything like that when you saw the two curves. But uh, and going over the streams yeah, and different weird. things like that, I think it's going to be a very, very, very nice trail. Any other board member have any questions? Wayne, how long ago did you walk it? I'm just wondering, is it, are you going to get soaked in muddy or is it pretty walkable? No, it, no, it we, was, we it, walk it, it's, it's not muddy. I was surprised because yeah. you got to think, all the water kind of ran, had a little way where it runs, and it went more to in the stream. So we walked the windmill last week. It was last Friday, I believe. Last Friday. And I, and, and I was thinking, yeah. hey, it's going to be muddy and nasty. Mm -hmm. And I even let uh, Michelle have my, my fire boots. Well, she, she had <laughs> I think I think she's still stuck she, in that bog she, down there. She had flip flops on. on. <laughs> she, she had flip flops on. But anyway, no, yeah. it, it was not muddy at all. I, I was surprised. And then there's a stream that runs continuously, goes on through, and heads on down to the Rappahannock. Yeah, it's a beautiful and, and property with it, big, big timber and lots of potential. And oh my I, gosh, I had the yes, yes. fortune of uh, being able to hike a, a similar trail in Hopewell, located behind a regional jail uh, recently. And they've incorporated fitness stations. Uh, Wayne, I meant to send you those text messages with the pictures of those fitness stations on them because it really it kind of captures the vision that we have for this being a historic interpretive trail, a fitness trail, and a nature trail all to boot. And uh, Wayne, are, we said some history with that too. Wayne, are any mm -hmm. of these crossings going to be bridges or, or there's no bridges in what you're showing? Yeah, well, so we don't really have any, I mean, we haven't, this is a conceptual, it's kind of a layout right now, but I anticipate that this crossing down here at the very bottom, at the very end of the property, that one's going to have to be some type of bridge. Um, what I'm anticipating right now is more of just kind of like a standard dock structure, uh, you know, yeah. piles and a wood, a wood dock going across. Uh, it's going to be pretty appropriate for this area and also probably the cheapest, um, I don't want to say cheapest, it's, it's still a good option, but uh, just a cheaper rally, no, no reason to go to prefab uh structure and then i think these crossings up in here um i don't think there's any reason for those to really be bridges right there um you know like i said they're kind of flagged in the field if you can you know orient yourself and figure out where they're at um uh, but it's it's relatively uh you know like like uh, uh wayne was saying it's uh it's pretty sandy bottom so they're pretty walkable uh, but we can also just build those areas up a little bit uh with just some stone and, and put some small pipes underneath to let water flow um, you know, instead of having to use bridges in, a, in each location. Um, is it, so is it too early? Some options. Wayne, is it too early to ask if, best case scenario, if you get all your approvals and permissions and permits 
what's the earliest start of, of construction and what's the expected duration? Is it too early to ask those kind of questions? Um, I don't think necessarily. I mean, um, you know, we've got to get, we've got to get back out here, our field crew back out to do some location and get some, some additional, you know, we've got a topographic survey, but we need to locate some of the trees and, and locate, you know, do a, a real detailed survey of this path. Um, so I would say, you know, I'm hoping to have final plans done um, in the next, I would say three months or so. Um, I don't think approvals will take very long. Um, you know, the county will be really be the only uh, approving authority, uh, assuming we're less than an acre of disturbance. Uh, we won't have to get DEQ involved. Um, I don't think VDOT will have a dog in the game uh, because we've got, uh, you know, we've already got existing access. Um, so then at that point, um, you know, the permits from the Corps of Engineers is pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't think that'll take uh, very long either. Um, so but all in all, point, I, I think we can... At what point do you have to worry about endangered species and artifacts and all of that, or have you already navigated that? Um, that'll be up to the core. Um, you know what they what they want to call that. They're, they're, the Corps of Engineers is responsible for that. Um, so you know it'll be up to them to determine if there's any any restrictions or anything that we need to be paying attention to. Um, well, assuming you, know, you get your vote today, when does this go to the core? Um, we'll probably get the per we'll we'll get the uh, the determination of the wetlands over to them probably next week, um, most likely. Um, and then we'll start working on, you know, the plans and the, the survey, um, and we'll send them in for permits um, once we get the final designs all done. Last question, uh, construction duration once we get to that point? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I know Matt and Michelle have been talking, uh, there's, I guess there's a, there's a, I guess a nonprofit company or another company. Um, Matt, maybe you can shed more light. I haven't looked much into it yet. But there's a, a company, I guess, that does trails and they do them. I believe it's volunteer, correct, Matt? That's my understanding, yes. Yeah, so I guess that a lot of it depends on, you know, if we use that avenue. I, I'm not sure what their timeline is. Um, I would say for a trail of this nature, I mean, you're probably talking three or four months, I would say, uh, for construction. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll close, Bob. I guess giving a little bit of input uh, to a side uh, endeavor that Michelle and I are engaged in and Wayne's assisting with, uh, we are attempting to apply for additional grants uh, that could help uh, contribute a little bit more money to this project. We should know a little bit more about that in the months ahead. All right, any, any other board members have any questions about the trail? Okay. If not, I think we need a we need a motion for Bay Design to uh, go ahead and send the plans for for this historical trail. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have motion by John. Do we have a second? Second. Second. We have, we have a second by Reggie and Pete. Okay. We have a motion, but probably second. Any more discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Coons. Aye. Mr. Mansfield. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kimbrough. Aye. Mr. Jesse. Aye. All right. Well, thank you, Wayne. Take care. Thanks, John. Thanks, right. Wayne. Okay. Next, uh, we have regular agenda items. Okay. Next uh, would be financing for the Middlesex High School HVAC and Coast Corner Renovation. Ted Cole and Dan Siegel. Feel like I don't need to introduce Ted because we all know him. Ted Coles with Davenport and Associates. All right. Well, I take this off. Yeah, yeah. You can take it off. You fall. You fall enough. Long as you don't spit this far, you all right. I think, <laughs> I think Dan needs to put his on though, right? <laughs> you do need to push the button on the microphone, Mr. Uh, Siegel. Oh, you need your microphone. Uh, cue your microphone on. It's got to be uh, red. There we go. It says it's that work. Yeah, there we go. Mr. Siegel, sorry about that. I meant the gentleman. That's okay. <laughs> um, so is there a camera? Yeah, there's a camera right there. But, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, appreciate being here. I'm Ted Cole with Davenport. Dan Siegel's on um, by Zoom. Um, I'm going to take a minute and maybe just a little bit of background on the approach to financing because I, I think there may be a few board members that this is one of the uh, first borrowings maybe that you all have been involved in. 
Um, there is a memo that we put together, but behind that memo, there's a, a presentation. It's, uh, it's a landscape and it, it's got County of Middlesex on the cover. If you can find that and go to pay the page one. Betty, on, can you pull that up and share your screen, please? It's, I'll let that, give me that gets up there. It's uh, the slide that says background and overview. Is this the one you're talking about, the background? Yes. You got them all? Yeah, starting on page one. Right. Yeah, the blue light came on. It's blinking. I may hit the light so you can see what it does. Betty, I think you want to keep going past the memo and we get into a landscaped presentation. There's a page one. And I think it's page 89, Betty. Okay, thank you. It sounds like you all can see it. Yep. That's okay. Um, th this table on this on this page gives you an overview of what the project financing will consist of. Um, and you can see at the Cook's Corner office complex, um, there's various improvements, HVAC, electrical, gym renovations, roof repairs, and window replacements. Those subtotal on line five at about $958,000. And then on, uh, in addition to that, there's a HVAC replacement at the elementary school for 1.7 we rounded up to an even 2.9 million. So what we asked the banks for was funding up to 2.9 million. In reality, we're going, and I'll explain this, we're gonna be down around two and a half million or 2.75 million, depending on whether or not you all wanna reimburse yourselves for a down payment that was made on the equipment. And I'm gonna come back to that. So that 2.9 is just what we asked the banks for at the high end, knowing we can come down. Um, this, um, this would be a, a bond that the county would issue through the EDA or the IDA, and it's a pretty common structure, structure in Virginia. So what we put together working with staff and Sands Anderson, who's the county's bond council, bond attorneys, is um, a request for proposal that goes out to banks. It's very specific on what we're looking for, the amount, what the security is, what the payment dates are, and all those sorts of things. Um, and what we ended up getting back is four proposals. I'll talk about those in a moment. But, but at a high level, um, we are issuing a bond to a bank, if everything is approved, through the IDA or the EDA, um, and the loan is secured by, um, in this case, Cook's Corner Office Complex. So it's a mortgage on that facility, very similar to a mortgage on your home. The IDA, you go by IDA or EDA? EDA. The EDA is, is really sort of a conduit issuer for this. They don't have any financial obligation here. This is a legal structure that is used in Virginia um, because we're not issuing general obligation bonds of Middlesex County. We're issuing this lease financing and the EDA um, structure helps get that done. And it's, it's been done many times and, and you all have done it quite a number of times. The EDA does collect a small fee um, for that. They do that for anybody that issues bonds through, through them. But at the end of the day, they really don't have any financial obligation here. It is a loan essentially between the county and the bank. You're making payments every year. And if there ever were to be a problem with the payments, the bank would have the right to take control of, in this case, Cook's Corner building and try to lease it out to recoup their, their money. But, you know, that 
the likelihood or chances of that obviously are, 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 are very remote. Um, so that's big picture what this financing would look like. And, and as I said, Dan Siegel is on if you have specific legal questions um, surrounding mm -hmm. that county EDA lease revenue structure is what we call it. Um, as we discuss approvals, um, what, what you all will consider today would be your, um, your only approval, and then we would need to go to the EDA at their next meeting, which I believe is in a couple of weeks. Um, April 15th, I think, is what we have. For them to approve it. And if all of those approvals are done, the documents will be executed and we'll have a closing and the money will, will move from the bank to a, an account controlled by the county. And then you all, the county will disperse those funds as project costs are presented to you. Okay. Good on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. In case we want to lease the building on ourselves, would that, um, we'll cut that, um, we can't do that or something? Uh -huh. So uh, the building that you're talking about, we borrowing money in case we don't make the payment is old St. Clair Walker at 2.9. Case we were to lease that building out and receive release funds from that building, can we still do that? You, you all could, you, you could, you would have to appropriate the money every year to the, for the payment to the bank. If the school board's in there, that's great. If a can, another county facility uh, office is in there, that's fine. If you want to lease it to some other entity, you can do that, but we've got to be mindful that you don't um, create a, any problem with the tax exempt borrowing. This would be a tax exempt borrowing. If you were to lease that building to a private business, we may have issues with the tax exempt debt and Dan Siegel can speak to that. But at the end of the day, from the county board's perspective, no matter who's in that building uh, or if anybody's in that building, it, you just need to be prepared to appropriate the debt service every year in your budget to pay the bank. So are you saying it don't make a difference? Dan, I, I might let you jump in if, if, if they find who's in there now, is it the schools? Schools and social services and uh, Rex. And Rex. So if if the, if none of those entities were in there and you said, let's get somebody in here and try to collect some rent, Dan, I don't know if you've been following this, but you may want to speak to what options or restrictions the county would have on that. Yeah. So um, as, as Ted said, because this is a tax exempt bond, you have to comply with the tax exempt rules that the IRS set out. And one of those is that um, it, it, if, it, if it's gonna be used for any private use, then it could, it could make the bonds no longer tax exempt and, and you'd have problems um, with the IRS. So any, if there's a, if at some point in the future, you want to, the county wants to rent it out to a private entity versus you know, a governmental entity, then you should you should t definitely talk to you know bond council and um, we can do the analysis to see if it if it meets the private activity bond test or if it um, is fine and so it'll it'll sort of depend on what the deal is in the future. So so you you would be potentially restricted on leasing that building out to some other entity. Correct. In only in the in that, depending on who that entity is, it may not be consistent with the tax exempt borrowing that we're doing now, and it might require that we convert this loan to a taxable loan when and if that were to occur, which would be a higher interest rate than what we've got here. But um, except for navigating those things, you would have the ability to to lease it out to other entities. So, so what you're saying right now is that we have a social service and in the school board and the building is owned by the county. Say we get a, 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 a deal to lease the school like, maybe to another school. Then how, and you tell us the interest would change if they are privately ran. 
but some schools saw academies and stuff basically are privately ran. Yeah, if, if it's a not-for-profit, 501c3 not-for-profit, then I think you'd be fine. If it's a taxable business, um, private entity, not, okay. not for profit, but private, you may have an issue with the tax exempt debt. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. Um, so anyhow, that that's kind of the structure. So now I would suggest we go back to the memo part of this, Betty, it's where you had started. Um, it's the portrait vertical, um, page and, um, I'm on the first page. There's page numbers in the lower right corner. We have basically on the background section here just explained that we're looking at doing up to 2.9 million. Um, we're going to come in below that, and I'll explain that here in a moment. A direct bank loan, it's evidenced by a lease revenue bond through the EDA. And what we've been talking with staff about is a repayment term of 15 or 20 years, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, Cook's Corner Office Complex, the HVAC at the school, um, and that the Cook's Corner would serve as collateral. We sent out the RFP to a, a very long list of banks. Um, we received back four proposals. Um, some of these names you may recognize, some you may not. We, we know all of these firms. They respond to RFPs regularly. So while they're not necessarily household names, maybe in Middlesex County, we do know them. And um, and have, have, done, have done financings with them. So we have four banks that participated. Um, when you go to the next page, page two, it's a summary. The top table is a summary of the interest rates. And again, we looked at 15 and 20 years. We're looking at tax exempt rates and we're looking at fixed rates, not variable rates. So they're going to be fixed for either that 15 or 20 year term. Um, Sterling Bank, which is ultimately the bank we're going to recommend, had a, had a fixed rate of 15 years of 2.26% and for 20 years, 2.53. Um, you can see where BB&T was as an example. They, they differentiate between something called bank qualified. That's that BQ rate of a 246 or non-bank qualified at a 256. Blue Ridge Bank was a 324. So you can see there's Hello. variability from bank to bank. Sterling is one that you'll see here in a moment we're recommending you all consider. If you were to do that 15 or 20 years, when we close this loan, that rate would be set for that 15 or 20 year term and it would only change if you all did something to change it. Okay, uh, the bottom of page two has the prepayment provision. So if we enter into this loan for 15 or 20 years, what's our ability to prepay it early or refund it later if there's an opportunity for savings? And with Sterling, you'll see that they will allow prepayment in whole. So whatever the outstanding balance is, uh, is on the loan, they'll allow you to prepay that um, at any time after May 1 of 2028. So there's essentially about a seven year no prepayment period. All right, but they would allow you to do it after May 1 of 2028 at what we call par or no penalty. Um, you can see with Huntington, they've got sort of a, a, a step down. They would allow you to start prepayment in 26 at a 3% penalty, then a 2%, then a 1%. BB&T had a little more flexibility on their prepayment. You can do it in whole uh, for the first half of the loan at 1%, no penalty for the second half of the loan. Okay. Page three. Uh, real quick, um, we, for, for Sterling, that whole or any time on or after May 1st, 2028 at par is for 15 or 20 years? That's correct. Thanks. Okay. Um, if you go to page three, the top chart escrow requirements. So when we close this loan or assuming that it closes, all of the money will come to the county at closing. Um, it'll be in, it'll be deposited into the, an account of your choice. What, what we've used hi historically, but you have other options is one of the, the, the state run, um, uh, investments for bond funds called Virginia SNAP, S-N-A-P. Um, it is money that is overseen by the Commonwealth, by the Treasury. 
Um, many local governments use it when they borrow money. They put the funds there. It's earning interest, albeit not a great interest rate today because of where rates are. But you are earning interest. You get to keep that interest. And as you need the money, you just pull it out for paying invoices and whatnot. Um, and Sterling would let you do that, no problem. Um, in terms of blank bank closing fees with Sterling, they are not charging any fees. Um, Huntington, no fees. BB&T had um, an attorney's fee for themselves of about 6,000, okay? So we get to page four. This is where we've laid out the, um, the debt service schedule side by side. Um, columns B, C, D, and E are 15 year paybacks. Um, column B is Sterling, Huntington, and then we have both of the BB and T interest rates. And then on the far right, column F is the 20 year payback from Sterling because they gave us a 20 year rate. What you will notice on all of these scenarios is that on lines 11, 12, 13, we're borrowing exactly what the project budget was for the Cook's Corner office complex, about $958,000. The Middlesex Elementary School HVAC, 1.7. We've got a placeholder for issuance costs of 100,000. That is an estimate that will, um, that will come down. We've just got to coordinate with staff and Sands Anderson to fine tune that number. It's a placeholder at this point. I'm very comfortable that will come down um, once we finalize these numbers. So you'll see that we're borrowing approximately 2.76 million. So we're funding Cook's Corner, we're funding the HVAC, we've got the cost of issuance, and when we push all of that together, depending on the bank, we're right around 2.76 million is the borrowing. So we're under that 2.9 million. And you can see what the fiscal year debt service is for any one of those bank proposals. The debt service on this would start in fiscal 22, which is the next year, the budget you're in now preparing for next year. And you can see the annual payments are really very close to one another. But again, Sterling offered the best rate. Uh, it's about $221,000 a year over 15 years. And down at the bottom of column B, you'll see it's 3314 over the total life of the loan if it goes all the way out to maturity. Um, on the far right, for the 20-year loan, we've got a higher rate. So we're paying an extra five years, but we but we have a lower annual payment. We're closer to about $180,000, $179,000 a year. Okay. So one of the things we're going to look for guidance from you all on is what bank do we want to go with and what term do we want to go with, 15 or 20? Um, and, and you'll see our recommendation is to go with Sterling. And, and if that's something you all are comfortable with, then the question will be, do we do Sterling at 15 years or Sterling at 20 years? But there is one more, um, there's one more item I want to cover for you all. And I'm sorry to do this to you, Betty. I need you to go back to, um, go back to, Page 94, Betty. Thank you. Is that up there now? Okay. Okay. What you're looking at here is the summary of the Sterling loans. Um, and what I just showed you is under column B as in boy, that's $221,000 a year. Column C is a slightly different schedule that takes into account that you all or the schools have already made a down payment on line eight of about $254,000. I think that was to order equipment or get something started. That's money that um, has been spent. 
and you all have a choice. Do we want to pay ourselves back for that money or not? So column B as in boy assumes that we get that money and we pay ourselves back. That's why our borrowing on line 16 is 2,759. Um, really, I should look at pit line seven, 2,759. If you don't want to pay yourselves back that 254,000, just assume it's been spent, let it be spent and borrow less. That takes us down to 2.5 million. You will see your annual payment drops to about 200,000 a year. So B versus C is the same bank, Sterling, same term, 15 years. It's just a question of whether you want to let that 254,000 go and not recoup it or um, pay yourselves back, essentially. Mm -hmm. Would it be better to just sit here and talk to this mic I'm good. We, can, we can't hear. I'm okay. What'd you say? Just a logistics question there, Betty. Okay. So, so that's the question under the 15 year B, B or C. And then I wanted you to see what the 20 year sterling look like. Um, column D is 20 years with sterling and it would pay yourselves back the 254,000. So the payment's about 179,000 a year. Column E is still 20 years with sterling, but you don't pay yourselves back the 254. And so you borrow less. And as a result, um, your annual payment's about 162,000 a year. So again, the question is, what bank do we want to go with? We're recommending sterling. Mm -hmm. What term do we want to go with, 15 or 20? And do we want to pay ourselves back for that down payment we made of 254 or not? Those are really the questions. And, and just my last comment is um, looking for that direction from you all today. Um, we will, if, if there is motion or direction, we'll, we'll let that bank know um, this evening or tomorrow. April 15th at 930 would be the EDA meeting where they would approve the documents. Again, they're required in this, in this, the way this bond is being structured, but they are not contributing any money to the annual payment. They are not um, liable for the annual payment. They are really just being utilized on paper for this lease revenue structure. And if all of that were to take place, we should be in a position to close by, by late April. Mr. Chair, if you would accept the motion, I'd, I'd like to make a motion for discussion. Uh, uh, let's let's dis uh, go through the discussion first before we uh, make a motion. Okay. All right. Then 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 we can kind of you know we're gonna have discussion regardless. Hey, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, as I mentioned this morning during our budget work session, we have built in debt service payments for this issue. Currently, in our draft budget, we have option B, which was the highest debt service. We went ahead and went with that option in an abundance of caution, not knowing what y'all would choose. But uh, assuming you would take the lower rate and um, the, uh, the term of 15 years. So any choice y'all make tonight less than that will pull a little bit of money out of that draft budget, just to let y'all know. You've also added $10,000 to the project, though. By taking the windows out and putting the gym floor in, it's about $10,000 more. Yeah, but yeah, my thought is we'd probably pay that out of fund balance, pay that out of pocket. With, with Ted, I'm, I'm just looking at the bottom line of what's going to cost the county at the end. And I, and I just want other board members to, to tune, tune in. If you're looking at 15 years C sterling, the total debt service is going to be uh, $3,008,591, right? Am I looking at right or wrong? Column C, $3 million. 8,591. Yes, sir. Yeah, that is what you would pay over the 15 years right. with that proposal. Because the, because the down payment is included with the payment. So you have uh, like 200,000 and 218. And then if I look at B, uh, at the end of the day, you're paying, your payments are more and then you're paying more at the, I mean, the debt service will be more. So it looked like to me, common sense, and I, and I want all the other board members to tune in. 
at the end of the day, after 15 years, you're going to pay $3,859. I mean, $8,591. That's right. All right, the other ones, you're paying more. And the only thing I'd add under that C where you pay $3,008,000 is you did pay the two fifty four, dollars uh -huh. so that's out of pocket. Right. But you're not borrowing for it, and you don't have to pay interest on it. Right, right. So it's, like it's, to me, in the long payment. term, you're saving. I mean, you know, you, you, you're, you're saving. Now, I, uh, just uh, looking at the bottom line, that's what I was just looking at that. But maybe there's some other scenarios that we got to look at, too. I, 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 just a question. I, I mean, I, I'm tired and just a question. I, I, we can see which loan is the best. How do the EDA the ties into this loan and our ability to lease that building out and get money off the building itself to pay for the loan. And you saying, are you saying that we can't do this based on what? Uh, I mean, case case we can put somebody in that building that we can make rent maybe from 100 to $150,000 a year. Our payment is 200 and some thousand. Are you all telling us that we can't do that? Well, I guess my understanding is they're in there now. So if you want to remove them from, you know, put them in some other space, right? Okay. They're in the building now. We have somebody in the building now. Right. Yeah. So, so if you were to make the building vacant and you wanted to say, okay, now let's try to bring somebody in who will pay us rent, right? Yes. Um, you can do that, but if it is an entity like um, Davenport and Company LLC, then that will be a problem with this loan. Because okay. we're a for-profit company, and this loan was made by the bank as a tax-exempt loan rather than taxable. That means we got a lower rate today than we would have. But when you put a for-profit company in that building, that no long, you're no longer eligible to have no this tax-exempt loan. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, Reggie, I'm about 90% certain, maybe as high as 95, the entity that you have in mind would be qualified as a not-for-profit and none of this would probably apply to them. It'd have to be something the bond council would review because they are not for, for okay. profit, kind of semi-government entity. Okay. Or I guess if I think I'm right, Dan, if, if, if uh, the federal government had a bill, you know, you said USDA rural development, said we'd like to rent a building in, in Middlesex County, that actually would be a problem because Correct. the federal government as a tenant is not consistent with tax exempt debt like this. So that if they were your tenant, there'd be an issue there. If Davenport was your tenant, there'd be an issue. But if it was a not-for-profit of some sort, um, there may be a way to do that and collect rent from them without upsetting this loan. So the nature of who would go in there will be important to determining if the loan is impacted or not. But, but we'd, have to, we'd have to look at that because it depends on how the, you'd have to look at what type of nonprofit it was um, under the, again, under the IRS rules. And, um, and you'd have to um, look at if it, somehow meets the private activity test and whether it's a long-term lease or short-term. I mean, there's just things you have to look at to make sure that it would still comply with the IRS rules. So it's a good question, but it's not, there's no, it, there's not a simple answer except when it's a, when it's a private company or like, like Ted said, if it's a federal government agency. Like to hear some more discussion from other board members. John, you have something on your mind? Let's hear it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of uh, following the advice of our council and pursuing Sterling. I'm in favor of 15 years. Um, I don't think we have real justification to go after the, the 20 year. And uh, I like option C as it basically makes it almost uh, uh, you know, we've already incurred some of the pain, and I think I think we're in a position to to cope with that adequately. So for me, it's uh, Sterling 15C. 
Good. Reggie, any input? So it's only $60,000 difference between you know, one and the other. You know, so you figure out just what you want to go with 220 or you want to go with the ability to pay. You know, So if you want to pay, you'll go with the cheapest one, which is $3,000,000.8. Three that's the cheapest one. Mm -hmm. so you just have to do what we can do to make that payment, you know. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, we'll we see. All right. Does anybody have any more? I couldn't questions? hear Reggie. I heard that blood was fine with what Reggie oh, said. I don't know if Reggie had his mic on or not. Did yeah, I, I, I didn't have my mic, away from mic on, John, but just like uh, Wayne, I'm saying, you know, looking at the dollars and cents, you know, it just makes you a uh, uh, good sense. You're saving $60,000 by using the one that we're talking about. Right. So time you subtract that and steal it to 300 some, you know, you're saving $60,000. That's what we are saving based on the payment, $60,000. Right. I just like the least stuff. That's the part I'm talking about. And I don't, I don't like the structure of some of the things that we got to do as a county to say we can't basically lease a building out because of what? I don't get that because I figured they're going by security. I don't, we don't get nothing for the school board to rent it out. I don't think we do. <laughs> Social service, I don't know what we can get from that. I don't know what we get there yeah. yet, but I will know. Right. But if we put an entity in it, it seems like the banks will be more responding because at the end of the day, the billing is back in the loan itself. Mm -hmm. So really, it's, it's, it's basically, I'll be honest with you, it's a good interest rate. Everything looks good, but it's nothing, you know, to me. I, I'll be honest with you, it's nothing. I would agree with the loan as a way of doing it. But really looking at it, uh, you know, I don't see it all that great. Well, and, and just to this point, that, it, because of that release rate, that's that's what I'm talking about. That 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 rate on the option we've been talking about is a 2.26 percent, right? Fixed for 15 years. Um, don't hold me to this, but maybe the taxable equivalent rate on that is closer to three percent. So Sterling would be happy to lend you this money at 3%, hypothetically, mm -hmm. not tax exempt, but taxable, mm -hmm. right? And if you were to do that, and Dan can correct me, but generally speaking, if you were to do this loan on a taxable basis at a higher rate, so your payment's going up, but you maintain much greater control and flexibility over allowing anybody to go into that building and pay you rent. So okay. it's a trade-off. If we vote tonight to go along with it, how long is this good? Um, this is set up to, and Dan, correct me if anything I said there was wrong on the taxable side. <laughs> it's um, set to close uh, April 28th. Okay. End of April. And is, is there anything that we could break it beyond that time? Um. Well, you can know uh, the way this is set up. It is um, it's non prepayable. This particular proposal is is non prepayable until May 1 of 2028. So you do have a period of time <laughs> <Okay>. there. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 So so I think what we've been talking about is sterling 15 years and downsizing the loan to about 2.5 million, where the equity you all put into the project stays there, you don't reimburse yourself. Right. And that will have a positive effect of about $21,000 on the draft budget, because we have that 21,000 difference in right. the draft budget for next year. That's correct. All right, does any other board have any more discussion on these bonds? I, I'm ready to vote at this time. All right. Uh, well, does anybody have a motion um, uh, on motion. the board at this time? I, would you say, Betty? The motion's been made. I don't believe there's a second, though. I didn't hear the motion. I thought you but made The motion never been made. Uh, no, the motion okay. had never been made. Okay. Mr. We're Chair, getting, I'd be happy to make the motion. We're getting ready to make the motion. John, go ahead and make the motion. I know yeah, I move that we author, authorize uh, Davenport to proceed with Sterling 15C option. All right. We have a motion by John. Do we have a second? I second. We have a motion by John, probably second by Pete Mansfield. Any more discussion? Only just to if prove not, that you were right, we did have discussion during discussion. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> we had the right time. Yeah. All right, roll call, Betty. Mr. Kearns? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kimbrough? Aye. And Mr. Jesse? Aye. Uh, Motion Mr. so carried. Mr. Chairman, All uh, right, well, in, in order to uh, actually have the bond documents approved, there's a resolution that was also in your packet. Oh, that, it is. That basically accomplishes exactly what you just said. So um, if you, if- That means could, we need the motion to pass that resolution, right? Correct. And that All right. resolution, have, resolution authorizes the bond issue and the- Do document. we have a motion to pass a resolution for this bond, bond agreement? What page is the resolution? Uh, what page? One ninety-seven. Is it the bond? The, bond, the um, assignment agreement, Dan? No, it's it's the resolution. So it's I think it. It's um. Let me keep going. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay, it's on one sixteen. Right. One sixteen. Mr. Chair, I move that we authorize the resolution of the Board of Supervisors of the County of Middlesex, Virginia. What is it called? Uh, is, is there a better title than that? <laughs> Just a, a uh, resolution of the board approving the bond issue. Approving the bond issue per page 116 of the board agenda. All right, we have that motion by John. Do we have a second? A second. A motion by second. John. Second by Lud. A motion properly second. Any more discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Coons? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. <laughs> Mr. Williams? <laughs> Aye. Mr. Kimbrough? Aye. And Mr. Jesse? Aye. All right. Most is okay. But uh, Dan and, and, and Ted, thank you thank for you. that thank information. You very much. And uh, y'all have a nice day. Have a safe <laughs> trip back, Ted. All right. Thank you. Next, I guess we have uh, health insurance, page 167 and 174. Okay. Okay. Um. Do we have David Rowe available? David, David Rowe is, uh, what is on? I see him down there, but the mic is on mute. Yeah, yeah he's David Rowe is here. If you have any questions, um, I included in the board packet the results of the, the survey that was sent out to all the employees that qualify for to be eligible for um, any of our health insurance plans. Um, so that is in there. That was sent out to um, 71 employees. There were only, uh, the response so shows 29 responses. There was one that came in after the fact that, um, that also did not wish to participate in a high deductible plan. Um, so, um, yeah, any board members have any question for David Rose about the insurance plan, health insurance renewal? I got a question. David, Reggie Williams, how how you doing? Good, Reggie. How are you? David, looking at the high deductible plan, um, I'm gonna try to understand it a little bit better. They don't offer uh, free checkups a year or anything like that, do they? Yes, sir. All all your routine wellness is still paid at 100 percent by the plan by Andrew. and and. And also a uh, dental included dental, what yes, twice sir. a year for cleaning. Yeah, yes, so sir. So it include it includes your normal checkups and it includes your dental at no fee. Yes, sir. It includes the exact same dental as the other two plans we offer today. Same vision with actually a lower copay for your uh, annual routine eye exam. You don't answer my question. Thank you, David. Yes, sir. Any other board members have any questions for David Rowe? Nope. Well, if we don't have any more questions, David, you have a nice day. Thank you all. Thank you, Betty. All right. 
Okay, next is an infectious disease plan. Now, Anne Marie, have, we need you to take need to vote on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Sorry about that. I jumped the gun. Uh -huh. Do <laughs> do we have a motion to to approve the health insurance renewal plan? I'd like to to make that motion. So the, the action that I recommended was renewal of the current plan options and continued funding of 100% of the employee only cost of the base plan. Okay. All right, we have that. That's that exactly. That's, we had that motion by <laughs> Pete. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion by C Pete, second by Ludd. Any more discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Coons? Sorry, I, one, I was still wanting to discuss. I couldn't get off of mute fast enough. It, oh, it, okay. I, All right. Hold, hold up. All right. Sorry okay. about that. Yeah. Um, so we're moving away from the high deductible plan option in, is what we're basically saying. We, we explored it and didn't get feedback that suggested it was something that was attractive to most of the employees. Is that the sum outcome? That's right, supposed John. to say hello, dog butt. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm good then, thank you. I got one, one other thing. Are we saying that the uh, 250 and the $500, the two ones we would vote on now? Because that's what we're saying. That's right, Betty? Is the 250 and the 500 the ones that we are passing now and doing away with the high deductible? Yeah, the current plans the we current, have in effect now. It's 250 yeah. and 500. That's okay. correct. No change in the plans. No change in the plans, just right. okay. status quo. All right. I, I would just add before we go to roll call, thank you to Lud for the research and the attempt to see if there was a better solution and, and just recognizing that we have a major health care issue in terms of our costs. And even even though it wasn't well received, I know some work went into it. So thank you, Lud. OK. All right. All right. Well, we had a motion in the probably second. Um, and it's already been discussed. Roll call at this time. Mr. Kent. You're muted. Aye. Mr. Mansfield. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kimbrough. Aye. And Mr. Jesse. Aye. Motion so carried. And All right. Were, were, were you yes, were you were you going to address the additional retiree Medi Medicare supplemental or not oh, offer okay. that at this time? Do you want me to pull that up or? Yeah, no, no, no. We can discuss it. That's no problem. Okay. I'll make so, a motion if you like. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I, I was reading up that you're talking about additional retirement, uh, retiree right. medical supp supplement option. Is that what you're talking about, Beth? Is that what she's yeah. talking about? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. That was just an, uh, another option that was presented. I didn't know if you wanted to to offer that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion mm -hmm. that we offer the Advantage 65 and Dental Vision Plan. All right. We have that. We have a motion by Ludd. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion by Ludd, second by Reggie. Any more discussion? If not, roll call for the additional retirement medical supplement. Aye. Mr. Mansfield. Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kimbrough? Aye. And Mr. Jesse? Aye. All right. We missed that one. Okay, we straight on that. All right, next we have Anne Marie McCarty, Infectious Disease Plan. You're on board, Anne. Anne Marie? Good afternoon. Do you want me to pull it up, Anne Marie, or do you want to share your screen? I'm going to figure out how to share it. I need to do that. Let's see. If it's working. Share. What do you see? Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. You just need to right. maximize your screen. Awesome. I see it now. Yeah. You can um, good. maybe make it full screen. Mm -hmm. Maybe. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Okay, got it now. Okay. So the recently enacted Virginia Code section 
16 VACS 25 to 2070, in case you needed to know that, um, requires all employers to have an infectious disease preparedness and response plan. Um, and this had to be effective March 26, 2021. Plus we had to provide training to certain specified employees that reached certain thresholds of risk. We've done all that. We did meet the deadline. So to that end, the county administrator's office, that's this office, used the Department of Labor and Industries base plan. They had basically set up a framework for it to develop this Middlesex County infectious disease plan. In addition, we provided a training guide for the, those medium risk employees and um, that was primarily the sheriff's office. So what you get here, what you see here, and again, I don't want you, I know you all can read this at your leisure, so I don't wanna overwhelm you with a dog and pony show on it. First of all, it is posted on our website. Um, probably the, one of the key components, hold on, on the wrong page, is that the responsibility of this plan has been assigned to your county administrator's office, and I will be tracking for the future any changes that are required by the Department of Labor and Industry. We did go through and determine all the risk of exposure by job duty using, again, the Department of Labor and Industries guidance. And what else could I tell you about that? Um, you could, and again, most of everybody that we had fell into the medium or lower risk. All of us in this building came up with a lower risk. The rest of the plan is, let me see if I can get to there. The rest of the plan is based on good hygiene and basically follows the CDC guidelines wherever it's applicable. Let's see if there's any more information. Other than that, I just think it's important that all of us know that we do have in fact met the requirements of the law and that we do have a infectious disease plan in place for COVID plus anything else that could happen. That was about all I was gonna say about it. I don't think that it's anything more to it than that. Any questions or anything I can answer about it? Any, any other board members have any uh, questions for Anne Marie about the infectious disease plan? No? It wasn't uh, that exciting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, we, so we have that plan in place. There's no, there's no motion on that. Nope, it I was just an FYI. So. Just say FYI and FYI, okay. All right, one key important sure. part of this and hat tip to Anne Marie and, and Betty. I think they've worked uh, substantially uh, on this. Uh, it does have return to work procedures that if someone was infected, how we would guide them back the into the workforce. Okay. I think that's going to be pretty important. Right. It definitely forward. will be because you yep. have to start opening up. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, appreciate that for that information, Anne Marie. And if Thank no you. Other board member have any questions at this time, we're gonna go on to next on, the, on our agenda. Thank you. Next, we have a budget supplement request, Betty Munson, page 189. Okay, only one today. And this was um, what we normally call an in and out where we've received revenue in and it's um, being used to offset the expense of that revenue. Um, this is uh, part of the Economic Development and Tourism, uh, a grant that was received for Arts in the Middle for $4,500. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to approve that budget supplement request? Request uh, FY2021-59. I so move. We have a motion by Pete Manfield. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Lud. We have a motion by Pete Mansell, probably second by Lud. Any more discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kuntz? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kimbrough? Aye. Mr. Jesse? Aye. All right, Betty, we have a citizen's appointment, page okay. 190 to 192. Yeah. Um, there's really only one that um, one committee that's coming up that has a term expiration of um, the end of this month, April 30th, 2021, on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, and that is the uh, term that R.D. Johnson is currently holding and he has 
sent in his application to be reappointed. That's in uh, John district. John, you want to make that motion? <laughs> I move that we approve the application. All right, we have a motion by John. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion by John, second by Reggie. Any more discussion? If not roll call. Mr. Coons? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kimbrough? Aye. And Mr. Jesse. Aye. Also, before we go on to this uh, surplus, uh, we got to get somebody on the Johnson Grass Committee. I'm sitting here looking, and I, I guess each board member, if you can find some a farmer or somebody, I think uh, George Sneeze is in your district, right, Reggie? Yeah. Yeah, he is. I think right across from St. Clair Walker School. Yeah. So all the other board members, I think we need to uh, find somebody that want to be on the Johnson Grass Committee. So just kind of put that in your in your in your book to think about it, and find somebody you know it could be a farmer or anybody that you know is concerned about the grass Johnson Grass. I would prefer a farmer, but if anybody that's interested in you know keeping the Johnson Grass down in the community, I think I think Tyler Crittenden. Is express some interest in perhaps yes. being on that. Right. That's in the district, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. I just yeah. wanted to mention okay. I talked to Jerry uh, Crittenden, and mm -hmm. he said that he was willing to do it. Okay. So I'll I'll follow up with him. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I did talk to Jason, and mm -hmm. I had to get back with him. Jason. PSC. All right. And, and also on the um, Board of Building Code Appeals, that, that uh, group is missing one person. Um, that needs to be an experienced property manager. They they have categories that those members have to fit into, so that it, that okay. is the one that is missing. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so moving on to surplus vehicles and equipment, um, you have a list of of vehicles and equipment that's been provided by our maintenance department. Um, all of those on that list are currently stored back behind um, the Puller Center um, and are available for viewing. Um, should the board choose to decide to make those surplus, we, we'll put those out for bid. Um, then the Sheriff's Office um, had a vehicle that <coughs> down, it's, it's currently down at the Napa store in Deltaville that's um, had been used for parts. Um, and that's, that is down there. Um, then it's been, I don't know if you would like to declare that one surplus and just sign the title over to that salvager rather than having it brought back up here. Um, we might, I don't know what, we, we don't have very good luck getting much money for these vehicles. So. I'm assuming one that doesn't have many parts left on it wouldn't get, we wouldn't get much out of that. Okay, so if not, uh, do we have a motion uh, for the surplus vehicles that we have equipment for the county? So moved. We have a motion by John. Do we have a second? Second. Motion by John, second, second. by Lud. Uh, Lud. Lud made the second, Pete. Motion by John, probably second by Lud. Any more discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Kins? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kimbrough. Aye. And Mr. Jesse. Aye. Do you, Aye. Do you have any problem with us um, signing over that one at the Napa to that salvage or salvage no. person? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then I think my the yeah, last you know for the holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last, the last item, this, this came through right after the board took action back in the fall to, to change some holidays in our schedule um, pursuant to what the state had done. Um, they, they signed into um, policy um, for the state to add Juneteenth, the 19th of June, as a state holiday. Um, and our, our personnel policy allows us to have um, 
additional holidays that the governor declares like um, snow days and uh, or not snow days, but um, additional holidays around like Thanksgiving or sometimes he'll give an extra day at Christmas Eve or something like that. But um, this is a this is a permanent holiday granted to state employees that we have to have approved by the Board of Supervisors if we want to have that included in our policy. All right. Uh, do, we, do we have a motion to approve uh, Juneteenth uh, in our policy for uh, holiday? So no moved. All right, we have a motion by John. Do we have a second? Motion by John, do we have a second? Yo, you want, okay. Well, I, nobody want to make a second? I can, I can make a second. Yeah, I'll, I'll second it. We have a motion by John, probably second by me. If not, okay. Uh, any more discussion? Roll yeah, call. I, 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 oh, I, I, let's I, discuss. I, right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just the point of discussion that I would just like to make is uh, some clarity here. The governor has imposed an additional unpaid uh, day off for all this, county employees by adopting this. No, this, this is. Yes, this was actually adopted by the General Assembly and the governor signed it into action. The, the General Assembly. So. Yes. This is no different than the General Assembly saying that everyone can work a half a percent less for the same pay, which is basically the same as a half percent increase in cost to the county per hour of work for employees. And just for the record, I just want to make it clear that the General Assembly here has imposed this on the state, an extra day off of paid work. And it, uh, from our uh, taxpayers' point of view, I just think they should be aware that this is what's happened as a result of this. I don't have any problem with the holiday, but I do have a problem with the General Assembly affecting our effectiveness as a workforce. All right. I'll, Any... I'll go on the record uh, in the discussion and I appreciate, Lud, your, your thoughts and your comments and, and making that known and understood by the public. But, uh, you know, the, the uh, June 19th, uh, 1865 end of Civil War commemoration of, of Juneteenth, I think in 2020 and 21 is, is maybe more important than ever before. And uh, if, if the General Assembly sees fit to maybe recognize something we should have recognized sooner, um, I'm, I'm actually okay with them forcing this one down our throat a little bit. Uh, generally, I'm, I'm opposed to unfunded mandates, but it just so happens we're in the process of trying to catch up on our salaries for our employees. So uh, I'm not going to get hung up on the on the uh, this unfunded mandate in particular, given the importance of the the holiday that we're finally recognizing. All right, do we have any more discussion? If not, we have we have a motion. Who motioned it? Uh, Reggie, who motioned? John, it? John made John a made motion. You second. I second it. That motion has been properly second. No more discussion, roll call. Mr. Aye. Williams. Mr. Mansfield. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kimbrough. Aye. And Mr. Jesse. Aye. Motion so carried. Next, County Administrator update. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, y'all have heard me a lot today, so I'll be very brief. <laughs> uh, just to reiterate, uh, for those in the public who weren't at our budget work session, I uh, wanted to remind the board I will be attending a meeting of, of regional county administrators where we will be discussing the potential formation of a tob tobacco tax enforcement board for the Middle Peninsula. Uh, we are looking into implementing a, potentially a cigarette tax for Middlesex County and potentially participating in such a board. I'll have more to report on that in the months ahead 
as well as a potential draft ordinance for the board to consider once this project moves forward. Uh, also, just as you can tell, our water authority contractors are making great progress. Uh, they were driving the pilings today for the storage and foundation support for our storage tanks and uh, other facilities down on the Rosegill pump and well facility. And they'll be doing something very similar in the Deltaville site soon. Uh, we realize that many times citizens may have a concern or a suggestion or maybe just want to get in touch with water authority staff and may reach out to the board and or other county employees. What we would ask from the water authority's perspective is that you redirect those folks through the water authority's construction inspectors or our, our staff, myself, uh, to channel those uh, concerns, complaints, and questions through the, through the appropriate channels. The reason why we do that is we have contractual obligations on our contractors to meet certain thresholds, and uh, we want to make sure that stays at that level if there are concerns about maybe how the contractor left the site, for instance. We want to make sure we get a ticket run on that. We make sure we have our construction inspectors knowledgeable of it so the proper procedure and chain of command can kind of flow on those types of things. Uh, Lud, I'm looking at you because I think you're going to be bearing a brunt of that down in Deltaville, people reaching out to you, but you also serve double duty on the Water Authority, and I think you have uh, Jake Porter's uh, number on, uh, on speed dial, so if you don't, you will. I uh, would just ask that the board uh, <laughs> redirect folks through the authority so we can make sure we document their concerns and, and handle them appropriately. And last but not least, of course, we are in the middle of, or not in the middle, on the tail end of budget preparation. And uh, I'll remind the board we have a work session on one o'clock. I have invited Dr. Pete and Karen from the schools to attend. And I believe Anne Marie has invited uh, Mickey Sampson from the sheriff's office to attend as well. Um, not looking too promising on being able to use a lot of the CARES money for the operational portion of the budget we are going to have a meeting and look into a little further like you'd requested and I'll have more to report later. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. All right. County attorney's on break. She's on spring break. No, Next I'm here. Go to Wayne, I'm oh. Oh, she's I'm, just I'm sorry remarkable. about that, Helen. I didn't even look at. <laughs> she's remarkably quiet. I came close to recommending a point or two. I hadn't heard a word from you. <laughs> no, okay. I know. I was trying something new. Um, I, I will be going on spring break starting tomorrow. Oh, she was. She was oh, being okay. very quiet, and I was getting ready to recommend y'all point her to the Johnson Grass Committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to briefly, I'll be sending more about this, but I attended my local government attorney's uh, spring conference. It was virtual, as many things are right now. It was really informative. Probably the, the most amount of information came on the legislative updates. Um, it was almost two hours long, and to be frank, it wasn't long enough. So I'll be getting... Uh, a brief summary to the board on that, but it, it was um, really informative. So I always thank you for that opportunity to continue my legal education and, and get a chance to talk to my colleagues to find out what's going on in the rest of the state. Thank you, that's all I have. All right, thank you, Heather. Next, uh, we'll have unfinished and new business. Unfinished business, we have number one, unsafe gunfire and residential subdivision. Pete Mansfield. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you all have uh, my request on page 199. And I don't think there's there's probably any questions on it, but if if there are, I'd be glad to to answer them. Basically, what we're trying to do is is give uh, different residential uh, areas and or not areas, but subdivisions, uh, the right to, to choose if they have gunfire based on uh, the safety in this closely uh, residential district. Uh, it would take a two thirds vote uh, to to not have the gunfire, and as it 
as it's shown in page 199, the, the county would then verify it. And if, if indeed uh, the two, thir two thirds vote is as, as given to us by uh, the, resident, uh, the residents of the subdivisions, uh, we would then agree to uh, use the state mandate 12, 12 dash something or the other. Uh, if there's any other questions, I'd, I'd love to answer them. If not, I would like to motion, make the, if not, I would like to make the motion that uh, uh, we adopt this, uh, this ordinance. Thank All you right. very much. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and, okay. At this time, well, Pete, Pete I guess Pete put the motion to write for Middlesex County homeowner residents and subdivision to decide if gunfire is unsafe in the community of Virginia Code Section 15. Point two dash twelve oh nine. I I do have a couple right. of questions. Well, I think we have to get a second. We had the motion, here. so we had a motion by Pete. Oh, okay. I'll uh, do we have for a discussion? Second? I'll second for discussion. All right, we have a motion by Pete and a second by John. Motion been probably second. Now discussion. Um, my first question, and this is just clarification. This. Uh, is a would be a policy of the Board of Supervisors, right? This is not an ordinance. This is just how we agree to act. Correct? I think so. That, that, that would be acceptable with me. Certainly, yes. So this would this would just be an agreement among us about how we act. Um, so then in your paragraph four, Pete, um, assuming that the names are verified, it says the supervisor representing that community shall present the community's request. I know in, in some other drafts, it said may present the community's request. And I don't know how we handle policy issues. So if it happened in the community and somebody didn't make the request, what happens? Well, uh, let's go with the word shell. Okay, and, and so my question, what happens if somebody doesn't? Well, then I guess you would complain about your supervisor not following through with <laughs> uh, the word shell. All right, and then and then the last uh, question I have down in the end of section five, I think there's a typo there. I think that word tenement should be tenants. Should be T E N E T S. Certainly. Spelling was never. In fact, that was the first <laughs> exam. I, I know you were in. You're in engineering school while I was reading. <laughs> Those are all the questions I have. All right. All right. Uh, the only thing I had was, you know, how Pete got started with this. Um, it was last year when a gentleman met me at the uh, trash dump and he said he had firepower up here on Red Hill in Atlanta. And I told him to go to his supervisor and his supervisor was Pete Manfield. So, and he did go to Pete Manfield and for the last almost a year, Pete been trying to get something done. And see, if you if you do something wrong long enough, you think it's right. Now, the things that made Pete come today and say what he had to say is that somebody was doing something long enough and we accept it and we paid it no mind. So when this gentleman last year he was telling me he had got real tired of it because he'd been hearing it a long time. And when the um, shooting and stuff would go on, his wife would jump in the bed. You know, I understand what Pete's saying. I understand what the gentleman was saying in the area, in the residential area, 
that he lives in. I talked to the hunting club yesterday in the area that I stayed, a homeless village. I talked to the hunting club. And they know if you do things disrespecting your neighbors, then we got to stand up as a community. I don't care how much law enforcement we got, all of this. Community is safe because of the people that's in it. And Pete just making a step to Dave, which he's been trying to do for at least 10 months and trying to make it right so everybody will understand. Now, whether he is doing the right thing today, I think so, because sometimes we got to turn our cheek at wrongdoing and start standing up for what's right. So Pete, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate that you trying to do what you brought to us today. I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, this happened before. You know, but we had a tragedy happen in the county and it, it came about that everybody started jumping around when something happened. It's time to make good, smart decisions before something happened. And hopefully this thing will work. And if we be a community, it will. So, hey, Pete, uh, thanks for putting it out. Okay. Reggie, if, if I may follow you, um, I was really on the fence thanks. about that. Sorry, Pete. Go ahead. I, I was just saying thank you to Reggie. No. Um, I was really on the fence about this, but Reggie, what you just said really resonated with me um, more than the language in the document. But and, and as much as I appreciate what it is to fight for something for 10 months and win or lose in this chair, um, what really resonates with me as well is, is thinking about, you know, the country lifestyle that I grew up in. When I first went shooting, I was shooting clay pigeons and I hit my first one and I missed the next 24, but I came away happy as hell. And I remember looking out on that hill and doing this as a family and friends activity. I couldn't see a house with, for miles, literally. And we have a place where you can do that kind of thing. And uh, I, I just, Reggie, I wanna say I appreciate your comments because it, it brought those thoughts to mind and, and took me off the fence as well. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Pete. Any, any more discussion? If not, we have a motion by Pete. It's been seconded by John. Okay, uh, roll call at this time. Okay, don't be surprised. We're gonna change it up. Mr. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Kimbrough. Yes. Mr. Mansfield. Aye. Mr. Coons. I'm still in shock. I <laughs> I had to warn you because I didn't want you to answer when I called somebody else's name, um, uh, Mr. Jesse. Uh, I yeah. Uh, okay, Moses. Okay, um, Betty, get roll call. I gotta go by. We've been here two hours. I know we get ready to leave, but I gotta go go by what we're supposed to do. Give me a roll call. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Coons. Sorry, it didn't last long. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Mansfield. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kimbrough. Aye. And Mr. Jesse. Aye. Okay, thank you. Now we next we're going to uh, new business. Any board member have any new business? Uh, yes, I, I have one, one item. Uh, I'd like to request $5,000 to be paid to uh, Timmons to investigate a different, uh, to, in, to investigate a way of, of us handling the water, uh, just the sewage for the Deltaville area. Uh, in short, instead of turning everything over to uh, DEQ, or H, I'm sorry, HRSD, instead of turning everything over to HRSD uh, to handle, Middlesex County would handle it ourselves uh, by transferring the, the waste treatment plant, which is currently producing uh, in-spec in waste 
that is going into Urbana Creek, but is due to move in the next couple of years. Uh, my plan would be for us to locate, relocate that plant just outside Deltaville near a wooded area. Uh, and the, after treating 15,000 gallons per day, uh, which I believe would be sufficient for, for Deltaville, uh, it would then be blown into a wooded area and I don't know what wooded area, but there are, if close to Deltaville, there's all sorts of wooded areas. I'm sure we could, could buy a couple of acres. Uh, we would blow it into uh, the wooded area. Uh, and the only bad comment that I think uh, uh, Timmons made when we when we talked to them, and Lud was on the phone with me at that time, so he may jump in if he wishes. Uh, their only comment was that uh, you could only do it eight months out of the year. Well, I I really don't believe that's correct. They were saying eight months out of the year because of runoff uh, and if you really think about it, uh, blowing, blowing waste, uh, wastewater into a forested area, first of all, has to meet uh, ground groundwater specification, not groundwater, but waterway specifications of the uh, point, point zero 0.03 milligrams per, uh, per gallon uh, nitrogen and whatever other requirements they have. Uh, first of all, when you blow it into the forested area, uh, you even drop that, uh, that nitrogen even lower. And secondly, if it mixes with rainwater, then obviously you get that, that mixture, which you, would make it even lower. And if it's already within specifications, it certainly would be okay to, to run off into any creeks if that were to happen. And by the way, I don't really think that's a big, big problem. Um, my request is for five thousand dollars for uh, what? Who is it? Timmons? Is that is that right, Lon? Timmons? Yeah, to Timmons. Uh, yeah, have uh, Timmons investigate uh, whether there would be any savings to us. Which, by the way, we would be. Uh, collecting probably somewhere between 100 and 200,000 per year, uh, which would be under the present uh, idea for HRSD, it would be going to HRSD, but instead would come to Middlesex County. Uh, we would also have the ability to uh, require it uh, be done in low lying areas which is the whole idea of getting uh, wastewater to, to the Deltaville area. Uh, in low-lying areas uh, during, during floods, it floods the septic tanks and drains off into the roads. And that's one of the things we're trying to get rid of. And this plan would. Uh, so what I'm asking for is $5,000 for Timmons to take a look at this idea versus HRSD. And I thank you very much. I'll, I'll second that. And I've got some other comments about it. I'm, I'm not an engineer and I don't understand the whole details about how a system could work. But what the driver for me is behind this, when we, constrain sewer hookups to only people who subscribe to the water system, we immediately keep ourselves from being able to reach a number of customers who really need septic service, but they're not on the water line. So we have sort of racked our brains for how could we possibly enroll people beyond what HRSD is willing to do 
and uh, we've talked to Timmons about would HRSD allow the county to install meters on individual wells that had the ability for the county to cut off somebody's individual well if they didn't pay their sewer bill? No, HRSD is not going to let us do that. So this uh, alternative treatment concept that Pete came up with would be another alternative way that would allow us to enroll people who weren't necessarily on central water into sewer service, which would help us extend the sewer service farther. Now, Timmons listened to this idea. They said, I, we would have to look at whether DEQ would even give a permit for something like this these days, and they may well not. But it seemed to me that it was probably worth having Timmons take a good look at this possibility and just see if it's a viable possibility. And if it's not, then we've exhausted every possibility uh, out of, of being able to have people on the sewer system outside of water subscribers. Mm -hmm. So for, it's for that reason that I support it. I feel like we ought to really run to ground every option that we could. All right. So, um, so for Pete, you, you, uh, Pete, making a motion. Are you making a motion on this, Pete? I heard you say five thousand dollars for this alternative. Yes. Uh, okay, alternative yes. sewer proposal. Uh, it's, it's just for Timmons to do a study. Okay, for Timmons to do a study. Okay. And we would we would take that from the same sewer account that we're taking the study. All right. from. Okay. All right. So we have a motion by Pete. Second. Second by Love. Motion been probably second. Uh, any more discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Williams. Aye. Uh, Mr. Kimbrough. Aye. Mr. Mansfield. Aye. Mr. Coons. Aye. Mr. Jesse. Aye. Motion so carry, Pete. Thank uh, you. We got any more? We got some more new business, Rich. <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know if it's good news, bad news, or any news at all. But if you take notice today, I had a lot of questions about the finance on the uh, Sinclair Walker building. The reasoning being is that I've been, you know, trying to uh, stay in contact with River Mount School Project, Charlie Pope. My last call and talked to him Monday, and what he told me, some of the buildings that he was interested in. The one was, well, let me say a little bit more about it. They're looking to house a hundred kids uh, with some type of uh, autism or disability, or disability special needs, yeah. special, mm -hmm. special need kids. So, um, and as a county and surrounding counties, we, we take kids to Richmond every day. Uh, the county have cars going to Richmond, drivers going to Richmond, North Thumbland, Lancaster, Matthews, all of them. They was looking for a location. And I told them Middlesex was the best location that they could find in all the counties because we were sitting right in the middle of it. And I've been calling Charlie, uh, or Charlie Pope was a real estate for um, Rivermount Projects. When I talked to him the other day, he texted me and I talked to him. He said, well, he said, we are interested. And I said, well, which buildings? I can't take it to the board. And what buildings are you interested in? Number one, when I talked to him the other day was Sinclair Walker. That's the building down there. I say, oh, man, I say, you could do Sinclair Walker. I could get that stuck on out the windows and keep John happy. But, uh, <laughs> and then the, uh, and, and then we talk about the Puller Center. We talk about buying or leasing. And, you know, if you price the, uh, according to uh, what we had, I got looked up today, uh, approximately cost of the uh, Polo Center down, which is available is, you know, roughly around $800,000. I didn't say we were going to sell anything for that. And the other building was the kid building, no interest at all in the uh, cafeteria. But I got a little drawing. I think if John and Pete was here with me, I would just slide you the drawing. But I got your mail, I'll shoot it to you and uh, give you an idea. And I'm gonna be calling him 
you know, probably for the week out. I don't want to rush it. And, and, and uh, hopefully, man, that we can, we can get this to come to the county. I don't know. It's no promises. Uh, but it's still moving. And, and, and once again, man, it, it's, he had been down to look at the buildings. And we've been texting back and forth. And when they get a mail, I normally tell uh, um, Rebecca Morgan, because when we were talking about it and uh, she gave me the uh, number to call and I've been calling because I think this project of Rivermount School is uh, worth having in Middlesex County. And as being on the board of supervisors or whatever we do, I told them that we're gonna make it happen. I said, if you wanna build a new school, we got land. If you got a building that we got, then if you make the price right, we can do it. And that's how I come I asked the gentleman today about <laughs> learning the money, you know, at a certain rate. I don't like my hands being tied on nothing. If I'm gonna pay off a loan, I wanna pay it off. If I wanna do the right thing, I'm gonna be able to make a decision on it. And I'm not 100% satisfied with him. So I told him when he left, we see you later. Because if things can happen right, we're gonna have to make it happen. And it's all gonna be at the end of the day, it's gonna be all about the kids and it's gonna be but the taxpayer because the kids are of our future and paying taxes right behind the kids because that's what makes it all work. Thank you. All right, great, well, thank you. Any other board members have any new business? All right, if not, I'm gonna go back to uh, number, go to number nine, matters presented uh, to the board. I, I know this oyster shell recycling is off the books right now, but um, let me go with Lud. I'm gonna start with you, Lud. Any, any, any matters presented to the board from your committee meetings? Anything? Um, yeah. Okay. Right, right. I, I, I got one more thing. I, I was talking to the hunting club yesterday, and they said it was a problem of the hunt dogs, which I don't know by law or whatever. They get no exercise during the summer months. I don't know if it was off the table or not. They was wondering. How could they get maybe one day a week or something like that to run their dogs and stuff like that? So I see all I want to mention tonight. And the second thing is that they were talking about when the dogs get lost and an individual will find their dog, come to their house and still they calling them and let them know they need to pick the dog up. They call the service, the ticket the time the dog ward, look at the name on the sticker and call the dog ward. Once again, these are things that are respectful, working with your community. If you see the dog tag, you call them up. If they don't come, then you call the dog war. These things that we gotta do to make us a better place to live. But I don't understand because I don't use dogs to hunt, but I know dogs need exercise because we got a dog park down there. So they run around the dog park. I don't know why hunt dogs can't get something instead of staying in the pen the whole time. So that was one question. I don't know how to handle it. I think it's, Against the law, I just don't know. Is there, is there it maybe, ordinance, is it? Yeah, it may be something the game wardens regulate when right. the hunting dogs can can run. Um, what I would what I'll do is probably request we call uh, Game and Linden Fishery, right. and and maybe talk to the game warden. Yeah, and see what see how they would advise. Yeah, I don't think we we don't have any ordinance on that. Yeah, I I would be surprised if we do because hunting is one of those things in Middlesex right. we just tried to stay out of right. and let the state regulate it. But I know somebody passed something about hunting on Sunday. What was that all about? Yeah, I think that was something recent over the last couple of years from General Assembly, wasn't right. it? Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay, Pete, do you have any committee report? No committee reports. All right, I'm gonna go back to you, John. Any committee report? Uh, did I miss new business? Uh, yeah, uh, well, what Reggie's talk about River Mount Schools? I heard, I heard all that. I just, I didn't, I didn't announce that I had new business, but it, it, it just came up in the last couple okay. of days. Uh, All right. Very briefly, I, I looked into the clearing uh, and the clear cutting that went on in Twiggs Ferry right across from the coves at Wilton Creek. And I, I've heard a lot of negative feedback. It looks like a tornado went through and left all the, the lumber that it didn't want just laying there. And I've seen that done in other portions of the county. And we, we, we've gone out of our way to beautify things like solar power plants 
Uh, we've, we've put a lot of consideration into storage and, and appropriate use for our village clusters and, and our sort of our view shed. And, and recently we've even looked at dilapidated buildings and unsafe structures. And the response that I got uh, from our zoning department and planning department was, this is pretty much standard protocol and there's nothing we can do about it. I can put you in touch with the Department of Forestry. Um, I would like to have the Department of Forestry reach out uh, to me, whoever that would be, because it, it strikes me that our forestry industry has progressed significantly since the time that my uncle was in it in Northern Canada 40 years ago. Uh, and there are practices uh, called select cutting that I'm sure our Department of Forestry is aware of. And I don't, I don't see why there could not be something in our zoning that says, if you're gonna cut it all down and take what you want and leave it a mess, uh, it, it doesn't need to be along our main highways. So I'd, I'd like to start a conversation with the Department of Forestry to make sure uh, that we're not overlooking an opportunity to, to sort of keep the beautification that we're trying to, to do here, uh, keep Middlesex beautiful, trying to pick up trash as well. Um, you know, if, if, if we look like we don't care, then people think we don't care. And so my request is for the county administration um, to have our zoning and planning and Department of Forestation, uh, the, the State Department of Forestation, whoever that is, our local contact, um, to, to at least reach out to me and, and explain to me in kids' terms why we have to look at that. And, and that, I just don't believe that's best practice at this point. Yeah, yeah, that is, yeah, that's through the forestry department. But uh, like I said, I know they, they go through there and it looks like I, even behind my house, uh, they wiped it out. But, uh, you know, when they do that, uh, John, you know, now you're telling me what I can and what I can't do with my land. But I can tell you in the three to four years, it'll grow back up. If they don't, a lot of times they reseed it and everything, but it looks like a, a war zone, no doubt about it. It's going to look like a war zone. But I don't know if, if anything that, you know, it's, it's good to check into. That's but all I, I'm I saying, Wade. I just want to check into yeah. it because I'm not trying right, to tell right. people it's, it's what to do it's with good. their land I, I can, any more than we do in, in our zoning and, and regulations that we have. I mean, we already tell people what to do with their land to some extent. I don't want to extend mm -hmm. beyond our authority for sure. Right. Um, but, you know, we're putting in water and sewer and, and that's got mm -hmm. a lot of benefit for the public. Um you know, we, we do things with electricity and broadband that have benefits. And, and we do things uh, just in terms of village clusters where we're trying to maintain the best use of our, our land. And I think this, I think we're, un, we're underlooking or overlooking, maybe missing the forest for the trees right now. Right, right, you understand. Uh -huh. Okay, um, any more matters presented to the board? Uh, none, I know I don't have anything. I that I can think of at this time. There's so much going on. Um, if not, uh, do we have a motion to recess? I so move. Second. We have, we have a motion. Who made that? Pete. Pete, Pete made, made the motion. Pete made the motion and we had a second by John. A motion been probably second. And I'll just, discussion? if I may, during discussion, Wayne, I, I, there's a good likelihood that I'm going to be late or may even miss the first part of tonight's program. My, my parents are in town in the COVID recovery mode. They've been chomping at the bit to come back and it's my mother's birthday. So I'm having to make some okay. difficult decisions. <laughs> All right. Okay, John. We, we understand. All right. Motion to prop this second. Roll call. Mr. Kimbrough. Mr. Kimbrough. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Coons? Aye. Mr. Mansfield? Aye. Mr. Jesse? Aye. All right. Y'all take. Thank, thank you.